Hello everybody and thank you for taking the time to watch this digital presentation. My name is Sienna and I am a conservation technician at the Land Between Charity. And today I'm going to be taking you through how to identify and distinguish between the 12 snake species that are found in the Land Between bioregion. Uh, you can then use this knowledge to participate in our Snake Supervisor Citizen Science Program. Or you can just have it in the back of your brain in the event that you uh, come across one of these cool critters while you're out and about. Okay, let's get started. So first up we have the common garter snake. This is a thin bodied snake that can vary quite a lot in its appearance depending on the individual, but often they look like the snake pictured here uh, and have a dark green to black color body with three light colored stripes running lengthways, lengthwise along the body. Uh, so one on the back and one on each side. So one on the back, one on each side. Um, the common garter snake can sometimes be confused with the eastern ribbon snake, um, which we're going to talk about next. So the eastern ribbon snake uh, is a relatively long snake ranging from about 46 to 86 centimeters. Uh, and as you can see, they look very similar to the common garter snake that we just saw. Uh, they have black thin bodies with three yellow stripes running lengthways along the body, uh, just like the garter snake, one on the back and one on each side. This shows that really nicely. Um, they also have white chins and a white yellow belly. Uh, and the best way to tell a common garter snake and an eastern ribbon snake apart is by their heads. So eastern ribbon snakes will have a white dot in front of their eyes, which you can see circled here and in this photo as well. Uh, garter snakes don't have this dot. So if you can, take a good look at the head of the snake, uh, and if it has a white dot, you're looking at an eastern ribbon snake, and if it doesn't, uh, you have a common garter snake. Next is the decays brown snake. This is a small snake that can get up to about 50 centimeters in length, and its body color can be brown, light brown, or gray. Uh, they have one broad light colored stripe that runs down the middle of the back, which you can see really nicely in this top image here. Uh, and that light colored stripe is bordered on both sides by a row of dark spots, which you can see in both of these photos. Um, in some individuals, these spots can look connected, making them look more like two dark lines bordering the light stripe. Um, so it varies from individual to individual. So either a light stripe bordered by two rows of dark spots, or those spots might look like lines. Um, the case brown snakes also have a dark stripe under and behind both of their eyes, uh, which you can see here. Here's the underneath, uh, the stripes underneath the eye, and the stripe behind the eye. Next, we have the red-bellied snake. Uh, as the name suggests, they have a distinct belly that can range in color from red to orangey. Uh, red-bellied snakes have brown, gray, or black bodies, and they have four dark-colored stripes. Uh, running along the length of their bodies, two of which are on the back and one of which is low on each side, um, closer to the belly. Uh, some individuals of um, red-bellied snakes may have spots around their neck, which you can somewhat see here in the bottom photo here, these light colored spots. Um, these spots can sometimes make it look like a ring neck snake, which we're going to talk about next. However, the way to tell them apart is that, is that the dots around the neck of a red-bellied snake will not form a complete ring all the way around the neck, um, whereas the ring around a ring neck snake, ring neck snake's neck uh, forms a complete ring. So if uh, you're a little bit stumped, do your best to, to take a good look at that neck area and see if, if there's a ring all the way around. Uh, and if it's not, if it's just some dots, uh, chances are you have a red-bellied snake. Up next we have the ring neck snake. Uh, ring neck snakes are thin with a brown, dark gray, or black body and a belly color that can range from dull to bright yellow or even orange uh, sometimes. And as we discussed in the previous slide, ring neck snakes have a distinct yellow, orange, or cream colored band that forms a complete ring around their necks, uh, which gives them their name. So again, if there's a complete ring all the way around the neck, you have a ring neck snake. And if it, the ring is not complete, uh, chances are you might have a red bellied snake. So it's important to look at a bunch of different features um, when you're trying to ID a snake. 
Next up is my personal favorite snake, uh, the Smooth Green Snake. I just think these guys are really cute and such a beautiful and unique color and they always kind of look like they're smiling. Um, so as you can see, they have bright green, smooth bodies and a whitish yellow belly. One tricky thing about these guys though is that they sometimes turn blue when they're dead, which leads them to be confused with another snake we have in Ontario uh, called the Blue Racer. But blue racers in Ontario are only found on Pelee Island, where the smooth green snake is not found, uh, and which is also outside the land between. So if you're finding a dead blue snake in the land between bioregion, uh, you have a dead smooth green snake. Next we have the eastern hognose snake. Uh, this is a large snake with a, with a thick body, a broad head, and a distinct pig or hog-like upturned nose that gives it its name. Uh, its color pattern can vary greatly between individuals, uh, as you can see from these two photos alone, um, both the same species of snake. Um, uh, some eastern hognose snakes have a solid olive or gray color with no blotches at all. Others can be dark gray, tan, olive, or brown with brownish blotches on the back and sides of the body, like this one pictured up top. Um, some snakes can also be yellow or gold with dark blotching, uh, and in some cases, pure black. Um, but those last two are quite rare, so you're um, probably not going to see anything like that, as cool as that would be. Um, all eastern hognose snakes, including those that are one solid color, will have dark patches behind each of their eyes. So this one here in the bottom is one solid color, but you can see it still has a dark patch behind this eye. And if you could see the other side, you would see it also has a dark patch. And this guy here is blotched, but he has these very distinct dark patches behind the eyes. Um, because individuals of this species can look very different from one another, it can be tricky to identify them by appearance alone. But lucky for us, the eastern hognose snake has a very unique defense behavior that can be used to help identify them. So when these guys feel threatened, they'll flatten out their necks to look like a cobra, uh, which we don't have here in Ontario. Uh, and you can see this behavior in both of these photos. So their necks are really flat because they're trying to make you think they're a cobra. Um, if that doesn't work, if this cobra appearance doesn't scare away a would-be predator, um, they'll pretend to strike. Um, with little bluff strikes, which are uh, usually harmless. Uh, and if all of that isn't enough to send a predator packing, these snakes will put on an elaborate fake death scene. They'll writhe around on their backs, they'll stick out their tongues and emit this really bad smelling odor, all in an effort to make themselves seem really unappealing and look dead, um, because what predator wants to eat something that's dead? Um, so all of these impressive defense displays have given the Eastern Hognose Snake the nickname the Drama Queen of the Land Between, which is pretty fitting, if you ask me. Next, we have one of the most beautiful snakes of the Land Between bioregion, if you ask me, uh, and that is the Massasauga Rattlesnake. It is the only venomous snake found in Ontario. Uh, these snakes are short, thick-bodied, and they have diamond-shaped heads, and often but not always have a segmented rattle at their end of the at the end of their tails, which you can just see here in the bottom of the picture. Um, but it's important to note that not all Massasauga rattlesnakes will have a rattle. Uh, so just because a snake doesn't have a rattle doesn't mean you can automatically assume it's not a Massasauga rattlesnake. You have to look for some other ID features. Um, the snakes will sometimes lose their rattles. Um, there's a ton of reasons why they might not have one. So it's important to look at other ID features before you automatically assume uh, you're not looking at a rattlesnake. So some of those other ID features are uh, Massasauga rattlesnakes have light gray or brown bodies with evenly spaced brown bow tie or butterfly or some people say saddle shaped blotches running along their back. So you can really nicely see those here in this picture. They're kind of butterfly shaped and they're evenly spaced all the way along the back. Uh, in the land between, these snakes are only found in western Muskoka along the east coast of the Georgian Bay. So that can be another way that you can help yourself identify whether or not you're seeing a Massasauga rattlesnake because if you are not in western Muskoka, then you're not going to see one of these snakes.
Uh, in terms of safety around these uh, rattlesnakes, we go into all of that in both of our snake supervisor presentations. So hopefully you're planning on um, doing some snake surveying with us, uh, and we go into safety around Massasauga rattlesnakes in those training presentations. Next we have the Eastern Fox Snake. These guys are quite large and can be as long as 1.75 meters, which is crazy. Um, they have golden or browny colored skin with a large, uh, with large dark blotches along their back and smaller dark blotches along each of the sides of their body that occur in an alternate pattern between the larger blotches on the back. So they'll have large blotch, smaller blotch on the side, large blotch on the back, smaller blotch on the side, and it continues in that kind of alternate kind of zigzaggy pattern. Uh, a good ID feature for these snakes is their distinct rusty brown or coppery colored head, which is front and center in this picture. Um, in the land between, the eastern fox snakes, just like Massasauga rattlesnakes, are only found in western Muskoka along the east coast of the Georgian Bay. So again, uh, you can use your location to help you figure out if you are in fact seeing an eastern fox snake, because if you are not in western Muskoka, you're not going to come across one of these guys. Um, to add to the ID challenge a little bit, eastern fox snakes and milk snakes, which we're going to talk about next, will sometimes rattle their tails in an effort to trick predators into thinking they're a venomous rattlesnake, uh, but they're not. So it's important, again, to look at as many ID features as possible when trying to ID a snake and not to be tricked right away just because they might be shaking their tail at you or, or something like that. Next is the milk snake. These snakes are relatively long. Um, they can be between about 60 and 90 centimeters, and they have a slender gray or tan colored body. Um, they have red to reddish brown blotches that are all outlined in black that run along the back and sides of their body. So you can see these blotches, they're all, they all have a black outline. Um, these snakes have rounded heads and a white Y or V shaped mark on the head, um, which you can see here circled. Uh, in red in this bottom photo, you can see this kind of, this is more of a Y than a V. Uh, and in some snakes, this Y or V mark may look broken in some places, so it may not be a complete Y or V, but if the general idea of a Y or a V is there, that's a good ID feature. Uh, and like we talked about with the eastern fox snake, uh, the milk snake will sometimes uh, try to trick you into thinking it's venomous by rattling its tail. Um, which it's not venomous and it's just trying to seem tough. So again, it's important to look at as many ID features as you can so you can do your best to um, ID the snakes properly. Next, we have the northern water snake. These guys range in length from about 60 to 110 centimeters and they have brown or dark brown bodies. Young northern water snakes, which you can see here in this bottom photo, um, have grayish bodies with a very visible brown banding pattern all the way down their body. So you can see these brown bands. As the snake ages, however, the body color actually darkens, which makes these bands a lot harder to see. So this is an adult northern water snake. Its body color is darkened, and you can still kind of see the bands, but it's much less obvious. It's just something to be aware of that... Uh, baby or juvenile and adult northern water snakes can look pretty different from one another. And last but certainly not least, we have the gray rat snake. This is the largest snake in Canada and it can reach a length of up to two and a half meters. That's that's crazy. Um, similar to northern water snakes, the young snakes of this species look quite different than the adults. Young gray rat snakes have dark blotches along a gray body, so similar to the northern water snake, except they're blotches rather than bands. Um, and then as the snake ages, it body, its body color darkens, which makes those blotches a lot more difficult to see uh, and makes the snake look like it's a more solid black than blotched. So both of these are adults, and in this top photo, you can't even see a blotch pattern. It's, it's darkened so much. Um, Gray rat snakes have a white chin, throat, and upper lip, and a checkerboard pattern on their belly. So if you can get a look at their belly, um, that can be a good ID feature to help as well. See this checkerboard pattern here? Um, and you can also use your location in the land between to help in your identification because these snakes are only found east of Frontenac County. 
in the land between. So if you are west of Frontenac County and you're in the land between, you're not going to come across one of these guys. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this snake ID presentation. Uh, if you like, you can put your new snake ID skills to the test by clicking on this link and taking our snake ID quiz. Uh, you can take the quiz as many times as you like and use whatever aids, including this presentation, to help you. Uh, it's really just um, to test your knowledge and uh, cement everything that you've learned into your brain. And now that you're all pros at snake identification, you're ready to become snake supervisors, if you like, of course. Um, as a snake supervisor, you can survey for and report snakes in your backyard or out on the roads. Uh, for more information on this, citizen science pro on this citizen science project or to register as a snake supervisor, please click on these links on the slides. Um, if you decide you are interested in becoming a snake supervisor, please take the time to go through the Backyard Snake Surveyor or Road Snake Surveyor online presentations, um, which can also be found at the Citizen Science Center page of the Land Between website. Thank you so much for taking the time to work through this presentation. If you have any questions about this presentation or the Snake Supervisor program in general, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we can be reached by email at citizenscienctlb at gmail.com or by phone in the office at 705-457-1222. Thank you.